Eric Wimmer here with Wasatch Heat Cable. Have you ever wondered what happens to heat cable if it's not installed properly? Well, we've seen some very interesting stuff, including catching on fire. This heat cable project was in Eden, Utah, and we were lucky enough to be on site to catch the footage and see firsthand what it's like when heat cable catches on fire. You would think that this would have tripped the breaker, but obviously it kept burning. They didn't have the right type of breaker in the panel or protection on the system. Worst of all, the homeowners had this system on an automated controller. So if they had been out of town and this thing caught fire, there's no way to shut it off. Even yeah. if a homeowner saw what was going on, they'd have to get inside to do this. The other interesting thing about this is the amount of cable it burned in a matter of three minutes. It only burned about five or six inches, but we have found cable on roofs that have been burned down seven, eight, nine feet, which would tell me they've been burning for a long period of time before something shut it off. Here you're looking at a gutter with some burnt cable in it, and these homeowners vacation through the winter time, so it would have been a pretty bad situation if they were out of town. switch on the thermostat otherwise I could turn it off <laughs> now all these situations are not necessarily a terrible thing having heat cable it's just you got to have the right system in place with the right protection there's a few things we need to know about it the first thing is you got to understand how heat cable works think about a light bulb it has a filament up in the top and that allows the electricity to pass over and then it glows well, if that filament goes away, all of a sudden, you have no current running through from your hot over to your neutral. Heat cable is very different. If you've ever cut open self-regulating heat cable, you might recognize some of these parts. Let me show you. So, self-regulating heat cable has these bus wires right here inside a plastic filament or component inside that holds them in place. That plastic part has carbon inside the material. Carbon is conductive. That allows the electricity to pass back and forth, in turn generating heat. That's also part of what allows it to be a self-regulated item, adjusting temperature output accordingly. Let me explain more of how this works. Here we have an example of the heat cable. We've got our black plastic, and then we've got two bus wires in blue. So this will be our hot, this will be our neutral, and then it's encased in that carbon polymer inside. The carbon is inside this material, allowing electricity to pass through in all segments of the cable, unlike a light bulb where it has one point. This allows for the cable to have a continuous feed going back to your panel in the breaker, receiving the same voltage as what's going out. So why is this so critical? If you had a spark right here, and let's say it started going crazy and started arcing and creating a mess of fire out here, you've still got a continuous feed coming back to a breaker. So the breaker doesn't actually have any signal saying something's wrong. Your heat cable is sending everything back and it's not receiving any information saying that you have an issue on the end of the heat cable. A GFCI breaker might be a solution, most people would think, but it's actually not the right breaker to go into the panel. A GFCI breaker is designed to cut the circuit based on a five milliamp imbalance on the electrical current. Let's explain this a little bit better. If you have a scale here and when you turn on your heat cable, it sends your electrical current out here and then settles down, and this is your five milliamp zone, the second your heat cable comes outside that, it's going to trip your GFCI. So you're going to get nuisance trips when there's nothing wrong with your system. We see this often with installs done by roofers, electricians, uh, gutter guys, people that don't really know what they're doing. The other key part, the third thing that's critical, are the connections. When you take two heat cable lines, and you try and connect them together, or three or four, or terminate it to a power source, or put it into a control box, 
you're running the risk of a failure point. And if they're not done right, you could get water going into the system. Water and electricity don't miss, mix. I believe we all understand that. But that's part of what causes things like this. A spark, an arc, and then a fire. So installation is critical to having a key system that's gonna work well. So if a standard breaker is not right, and a GFCI breaker is not correct, what's the right type of breaker? It is a GFEP breaker. Most people are not familiar with these. You can see here, it has a test reset button like a GFCI, but it's very different from a GFCI because it trips at a 30 milliamp imbalance versus a five. So imagine your lines are now out here. This is your barrier. You now have enough room for the system to energize, operate, and properly do its thing without the GFCI tripping and interrupting its system. GFEP loads can be placed anywhere in the system. You can put them in as the breaker. You can also put them in line on the heat cable as a GFEP pigtail. They make those. You can also integrate them into a control box as you see here. This is one of our customized control boxes. We can add multiple GFEPs. You can see one here, but we can put multiples in here to control multiple circuits. So if you got one circuit, 10, maybe 20, but we can build custom boxes and reduce the cost of your GFEP. Why do I mention cost? This breaker right here is about 200 to $300, depending on where you get it. And I have seen breakers go up as high as $700 for a GFEP. We can install this kind of protection in a control box for multiple circuits and at a fraction of the price of a GFEP breaker. It's a huge savings on large projects. I hope this information has been helpful and useful for you. Don't forget to check out our website at wasatchheatcable.com and if you have any questions, call us at 801-866-1110. Keep in mind, we'd like to work with you on upcoming projects and anything you need help with. We evaluate projects all the time. So we do a lot of that stuff 100% free. If you got a project, you're building a home or building a, a commercial property, let us take a look at your heat tape design, your system, the electrical circuits, and what you need. We'd love to work with you on those things. Again, thanks. This is Eric with Wasatch Heat Cable.